Welcome to the first uh, video of Blender 3D in depth uh, video channel on YouTube. Uh, today we will be talking about the introduction to uh, hardware for GP rendering and to the computing. <coughs> My name is uh, Josef Zajac and uh, I do some video tutorials for Blender Slovakia. So let's go into it. Uh, let's start with a brief history. Uh, so the first uh, device with uh, compatibilities uh, was released in November 2006 uh, it was the GeForce 8800 GTX Ultra uh, with 128 CUDA cores or uh, that time called stream processors in April 2010 uh, the new uh, GeForce 400 and 500 series came up uh, based on new Fermi architecture uh, with up to 512 CUDA cores uh, if you would like to uh, learn more about this Fermi architecture uh, please take a look on the web page of NVIDIA uh, in November 2010 a GeForce 590 uh, GTX 590 uh, came uh, out 1024 CUDA cores in March 2012, a new NVIDIA GeForce 600 and 700 series came out based on Kepler architecture. For more about this uh, architecture, you can read on uh, their website. Okay, let's take a look on graphic card specification and how to read them. So, first of all, I want to make a difference between a graphic card and GPU. Uh, so, graphic card is a piece of hardware which goes into your... Uh, most probably this time PCI Express uh, slot and uh, GPU or graphic processing unit is the processor on the graphic card which makes the, uh, the computation for example a GeForce GTX 590 is a dual GPU graphic card and has two GF110 uh, GPUs built on Fermi architecture Okay, let's take a look on uh, specification where to find them on NVIDIA. Okay, so first of all, uh, when we enter www.nvidia.com, we came to this site. Uh, from products, we can find uh, uh, processors GeForce, or you can go directly to the site www.geforce.com. Uh, from here, uh, we are going to look for desktop GPUs. And let's start with the 518 GPU. The specifications can be found here. And uh, let's try to read them. So first of all, what uh, we are interested in is the number of CUDA cores, uh, which says, uh, in, this, in this case, it's 512. The second one is uh, uh, the uh, clock of the... Of the GPU and then the, s the memory clock, the speed of uh, the memory, uh, the configure uh, the standard memory config, so how many uh, megabytes of memory are inside the graphic card and then memory interface and memory interface width, so how many, uh, how what width is, is, uh, is the memory interface so how fast can uh, the CPU and GPU communicate and the memory bandwidth which says the amount of uh, of data in gigabytes which can be transferred within a second okay uh, so this is the 580 uh, series let's oh, not series but it was a, a card 580 uh, from the 500 series so the graphic card 680 comes with 1536 uh, cores uh, the base clock is higher memory speed seems up to 6 gigab gigabyte per, per second and uh, uh, yeah 256 big bit uh, memory interface when you compare it to the previous card uh, you can see 
Uh, yeah, let me see. There it is. Uh, the 500 series used 384 bit uh, memory interface, while the 680 used only 256. Uh, 256. So there is a there is a little backdrop. Uh, also, the memory speed is uh, showed other way. Here it is in uh, gigabytes per sec, while in 580 it is in the memory clock is just in uh, megahertz. So we will show later up how to uh, know the exact dates using uh, GPU Z. Okay, uh, let's see the 78, 700, 780 uh, GTX, which has 2,304 CUDA cores, and uh, yeah, it also have the same 384-bit memory interface like the 580 uh, had. Okay, uh, usually here uh, there are start standard memory configs, uh, but there can be some special cards, uh, special editions like this Gainward GeForce GTX 580, which came with 3 uh, gigabytes of RAM instead of 1.5, which is the standard uh, for uh, 580 cards. Okay, one more thing uh, is uh, when we consider a graphic card uh, which is based uh, like GeForce GTX 590 uh, which is based uh, or it has uh, two uh, GPU uh, on board uh, so the CUDA course is doubled in this case because uh, it uses uh, two 580 uh, GPUs, but uh, with, with with lower uh, graphic clock and memory clock. So uh, some of these has to be uh, counted per uh, GPU. For example, the standard config of this card is uh, three gigabytes but it uses only one and a half gigabyte per GPU so this is the limit until when we can go uh, uh, with with data on this uh, graphic card same applies to number of CUDA cores so one uh, GPU has only 512 uh, CUDAs and the same applies to memory interface and of course memory bandwidth uh, since we are uh, going to send the data to, to both cores because we are going to do GPU computing. Okay, so uh, maybe you get a little lost uh, in, the, in the specifications and uh, NVIDIA uh, based, uh, based really on the marketing, uh, they use uh, different uh, values. Uh, so to make it clear, uh, it is better to use uh, Tech Power Up GPU Z utility, or search for uh, GPU Z results regarding to some graphic cards. Uh, so here we can read uh, uh, the name of the graphic card, the name of the GPU. Uh, then what we are interested in is the uh, it's the bus width so this is the memory interface width uh, the memory size the bandwidth memory bandwidth and the GPU clock and memory clock here uh, we will uh, consider the default clock so no over overclocked uh, uh, values but, but the default uh, values so the default clock this is the speed uh, of the of the GPU. This is the speed of the memory, and this is the speed of of shader. But we will consider these two. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so you can, uh, if you want to take a look on your GPU, uh, you can use uh, GPU Z, and you can download it on this web page. 
Okay, let's take a look on the graphic card specification comparison. So here I made a chart or, or a table uh, which lists uh, the various uh, graphic cards which are which are available uh, at the moment uh, and I used GPU Z uh, for these values because uh, in this way we can really see that the memory clock of uh, GTX 580 is uh, uh, 1000 uh, megahertz uh, or 1 gigahertz while uh, for example the 700 uh, 80 or Titan has one and a half gigahertz or 1502 uh, megahertz uh, speed. Uh, so this is the difference when we, when we, when we consider the uh, specification listed on uh, NVIDIA's uh, uh, site. So uh, from, from the marketing uh, perspective, it is it seems much much faster when you use uh, another kind of measuring but uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, when you really get into it and you understand the values it is only one and a half times uh, faster uh, the memory clock of this card so it's it's not like it seems it's three times faster and so on uh, oh okay so how we can I, I have also some uh, some little uh, calculations here uh, so uh, I was uh, trying to calculate the maximum memory throughput uh, which is calculated by the memory clock uh, it's this line uh, multiplied by pump rate uh, the pump rate uh, depends on the kind of memory which is used uh, in this case all the graphic cards listed here use uh, graphic double data rate 5 uh, memories which are uh, so called quad pumped memories so you uh, multiply it by 4 then the bus width uh, which is uh, in this case for example uh, 384 uh, but it is in bits so uh, if we want bytes we have to divide it by 8 so this way we we get uh, this why we get uh, this is the way how we get uh, the maximum memory bandwidth okay another thing which is not listed uh, in gaming cards but it li it is listed in uh, uh, professional cards is the peak memory uh, the pattern uh, peak performance uh, based on single precision uh, it is listed in uh, gigaflops and uh, let's calculate these because these are not listed uh, on the on the pages of uh, uh, GeForce so the theoretical shader uh, performance in single precision uh, precision floating point operation uh, can be uh, calculated by the shader count so this uh, this kind it is uh, this time it is a, a count of CUDA cores uh, multiplied uh, by the frequency of the shader and uh, uh, it is multiplied also by two uh, this is uh, this is how it is calculated uh, and to have gigaflops I have divided it to uh, by 1000 so uh, once again we have number of CUDA cores times uh, number or the speed of the processor in megahertz uh, times 2 divided by 1000 and uh, now we can uh, compare the performance of uh, uh, of gaming cards with the professional cards so for example uh, GTX 590 uh, has a comparable uh, peak performance uh, in single precision uh, operations uh, like the professional uh, Quadro uh, K4000 
Okay, so what is the difference between between these cards? So uh, y the difference is in what they are optimized. Uh, so the gaming cards are optimized for DirectX, uh, and the professional cards are optimized for uh, OpenGL. Okay, let's get back to the slides. Uh, so let's do some testing the arion gpu benchmark i choose for this so let's take a look on uh comparison of geforce gtx 680 and whether it is faster than the gft uh, geforce gtx 580 so uh the the source uh for the results is uh here uh, down there I used uh, three to four uh, values which have been found and I made an average value out of them. Uh, so when we compare these two cards and they give the same CUDA performance. If 680 is faster than 580, the answer is not. Uh, and why? So uh, the thing is that uh, when uh, uh, around the year of 2010 when nvidia was trying to push uh, the cuda uh, and made a lot of marketing around cuda uh, they optimized the 500 series for cudas uh, so the wide range of people can uh, can really try it uh, and, and and see some performance later on uh, when a 600 series came out uh, they tried to uh to divide the, the market for gamers cards and uh, professional cards uh with CUDA compatibilities so that's why uh i think the 500 series were more were more uh CUDA optimized and the 600 uh, series were more uh, game performance optimized uh, for some future work i would like to do some benchmarking and comparison of uh, 500 series graphic cards in Blender Cycles, Arion and Octane and uh, I will make a video how to build a CUDA rendering PC with multiple graphic cards uh, and uh, in some cases with more than uh, one power supply unit we will try to do it cheaply from secondhand uh, components that's it give a thumb up a like if you learn something new from this video and feel free to subscribe for upcoming videos. Thank you for your attention. From uh, Blender 3D In-Depth, uh, Josef Zayat. Goodbye.